Scientists, Mr. Stafford here, and today I wanted to show you Unit 4, Lesson 9, using logical operators. The first level says, initialize a painter object at 7.5 facing north with one unit of paint. So we make a painter object, painter Medina equals new painter, and it's going to be at 7.5 facing north and one unit of paint. Okay. While the painter is facing north, so we're going to need a while loop, while Medina dot facing north check if she has paint in her bucket. So we're going to say if Medina has paint And if so, she would add more paint to her bucket, but only if she can move. Okay? So if so, she would add more paint to her bucket, but only if she can move. And what I notice is, if we put her at 7, 5, so that would be at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. She's going to be sitting here right below that first bucket of paint. So actually what I want to do if she has paint, I'm going to ask her to move, Medina.move. <clears throat> which would put her on that first bucket of paint. And she would add more paint to her bucket, but only if she can move. So I'm going to say if Medina dot can move. I'm going to say Medina dot add paint. Okay. And if she has paint in her bucket but can't move, she will turn left, move, and paint. Okay. So in here I'm going to say if Medina dot can move. Oh no. I need to see if she has paint in her bucket. If Medina dot has paint, but can't move, she will turn left, move, and paint. So if she has paint in her bucket, and Medina dot can move, Okay, but we want to know if she can't move. So I need the not operator that says that she can't move. <clears throat> what I need to have Medina do, Medina dot turn left and Medina dot paint. And I want her to paint, oh let's paint white. And if she has no paint, she will just turn left and move. Okay, so if Medina dot has paint, okay, but we want to know if she doesn't have any paint, she will just turn left and move. So I'm going to have Medina dot turn left. And Medina dot move. Now I think I missed a step from up above in this. So if Med if she has paint in her bucket, so Medina has paint, but can't move, she will turn left, move, and paint. I had her turn left, but I didn't have her move. So I'm gonna say Medina dot turn left. Oops, and Medina dot move. Okay. Okay, let's run this and see what happens with Medina the painter. Okay. And instead of it being called add paint, I think it is take paint. And it is take paint. All right. So my picture is a little bit different than what we have um, here. 
because I've got one more bucket left. So what I want to do is slow this down and run it. She's moving forward, but she also needs to take paint. Okay, she also needs to take that last paint. So Medina dot has paint. And she can't move then I also want her to take paint with that last one so I'm gonna say Medina dot take paint and let's run this one more time and see how she does and it turns out like our goal picture very good so I'm gonna click finish and this says refactor your code to use logical operators okay so I have one logical operator I have Medina dot has paint and Medina dot can move which is already a logical operator let me see if I can refactor this so that I can use a different logical operator I'm going to change these first two to see if it changes the outcome of my program. So Medina.hasPaint and Medina.canMove. And so I'm going to cut this, take paint, and paste it underneath and then rerun this program and see how it has changed. So Medina is moving and there we go. So that's one logical operator that I can use um, instead of that nested if statement. Okay, very good. Um, go ahead and click finish on that. Answer these questions and move on to level number four. So it says one of the rules of the pop balloons game is that the player can only roll one dice if balloons seven, eight, and nine have been popped. Okay, so the player can only roll one dice if balloons seven, eight, and nine have been popped. And in the balloons game.java, specifically the method that we need to go to is the can roll both. It says declare and initialize a Boolean variable to true to track the status of the balloon. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to say boolean status is going to be equal to true. Okay. And then it says declare and initialize balloon variables to the balloon objects returned from game display dot get balloon. Okay. So this is create balloon variables for balloon 7, 8, and 9. So I'm going to say balloon b7 is going to be equal to, and we have this game display dot get balloon. So I'm going to copy that, game display dot get balloon. And I want to go to the game display and look at the get balloon method just to refresh myself. And so I see this balloon get balloon method and I'm asking for an int value okay so I'm looking for a value here and what that value is is gonna be the balloon 7, 8, and 9 so I'm gonna go back to my pop balloons game go back to the method that I was in this get balloon is going to be that value is going to be 7 okay and I need to do that for balloon 7, 8, and 9 so I'm going to copy and paste that and change it to b8 and B9 for those three balloons. Okay. Then it says if the balloons with values 7, 8, and 9 are popped, okay, use the game display update message to tell the player they can only roll one dice. So to do, check if balloons 7, 8, and 9 are popped and remove right dice if that is true. So I'm going to say if b7 dot and so there should be a method 
in which I can check to see if it is popped. And I'm pretty sure that's the name of the method, but I want to go back to the balloon class. And I do have a method called is popped. So that's what I'm going to use in the method that I'm currently writing. Can roll both. Okay. Okay, so b7 dot is popped. and b8 dot is popped and b9 dot is popped so if all three of those balloons are popped 7 8 and 9 okay so if the balloons 7 8 and 9 are popped use the game display dot update message to tell the player that they can only roll one dice. So I'm going to say balloons 7, 8, and 9 are popped. You can only roll one dice. Okay. And then we need to declare and initialize dice right. So we're making another dice. Okay. So dice right and set it equal to the dice object returned from game display dot get right dice. Okay, so I'm gonna copy that. So I'm gonna get the right dice from game display. And then it says use my board dot remove item right dice dot get current side. Okay, so I'm going to copy that and paste it here. My board dot remove item write dice, which is the dice that I just created on the line above, and dot get current side. And then we need to set the balloon, sorry, set the Boolean variable to false. So the Boolean variable that I created was called status. So I'm gonna say status now equals false. And the last step is to return the Boolean variable. So I need to return, instead of false, I'm going to return status. Okay, I'm going to run this just to make sure that I don't have any errors. And I might have some. We couldn't compile. On line 10, I have... Oh, I had some additional code there. Okay, I'm going to clear the console run this, make sure that I can play. We couldn't compile my program. On So I have balloon B7, okay. So it doesn't like that on line 191. So I'm gonna flow to 191. And I've misspelled balloon with only one L. So make sure that I spell that correctly. Run this one more time, and this seems to work out. Okay, very good. Stop that program, click Finish. And it says, next, let's update the roll dice method in Pop Balloons game. So I'm going to Pop Balloons game, and I need to flow to roll dice method. So here I have it, roll dice. To check if the player can roll both dice before the right dice is rolled. Okay. So after the left dice is updated, okay, so I have dice left, and I need after the left dice is updated. Okay, so I need update dice, and so here's my dice left. Okay. So after it's updated, add an if statement to check if can roll both. Okay, so the method that I just wrote can roll both. I'm going to check that before I update my right dice. So I've got one too many curly braces there. 
I'm going to tab all of that code over so it's nested within my if statement. Okay, so if can roll both, I'm updating my right dice. It says move the code to generate the random number and update the right dice inside of the if statement. Okay, check, I've already done that. And it says since dice right value could be zero, if can roll both is false, initialize dice left value to one. Okay, so dice left value is going to equal one and dice right value to be zero. So we're just initializing dice right value to be zero because if, it, uh, if I can't roll that dice, then it's not going to have a value. Okay, at the beginning of the roll dice method. Okay, I'm going to head and hit finish on this. That's the uh, step number three. Oh, it's asking me to run it. Okay, run it, roll the dice, there's seven. One and eight, one and six, two, eight, and done. Okay, so I'll hit finish. It says the moves left method in pop balloons game dot Java. Okay, so pop balloons game, and I'm gonna go ahead and look at moves left. Currently, only checks which balloon objects have been popped. Okay, so to complete this method so that it checks whether or not there are moves left on the board, modify the if statement that checks whether the current balloon equals the next balloon. Okay, So I'm looking for the if statement that checks whether the current balloon equals the next balloon. Okay, so just to make sure that I'm in the right spot, I'm going to create some white space there by doing the following if both balloons are equal. So if these balloons are equal, current balloon and next balloon, okay? It says declare and initialize int total balloon value, okay, so I'm going to copy that, total balloon value, to the sum of, so I need to add the current balloon value, so current balloon dot get value, And I'm going to make sure that get value is a method in balloon, so I'm going to flow over to the balloon method. There's equals on click is pop and get value. Okay, get value is a method that I can use to get the value for the specific balloon. Okay, and I'm going to go back to the moves left method that I was just in. Okay, so here's my current balloon dot get value, and I need to do the sum of current balloon and the next balloon value. So next balloon dot get value. <clears throat> if the value of the current balloon equals the total roll, okay, so I think after this, I need to add an if statement. So it says, if the value of the current balloon equals a total roll. Okay, so I need to make sure that I have total roll. I think total roll is an instance variable. Okay, and it is, very good. Okay, so I'm saying if current balloon dot get value is equal to the total roll or so we need to add those two vertical pipes the total balloon value which is the int that we just made up above is equal to the total roll Then we set the Boolean va variable to true. Okay. 
So then, make sure that our curly braces are in the right spot. Got a curly brace there, got a curly brace there. Then we set the Boolean variable to true. Okay, let's run this, make sure that this is okay. Roll the dice, total value is four, total value is eight, total value is four, total value is eight. All right, um, and you may need to check this a couple of times, <clears throat> run this a, a, a couple of times to make sure that this works, where if you have seven, um, eight and nine already taken care of, that you can't roll again. And so I'm going to check it and make sure. Oh, close. And then set to two. And I can't play anymore. Okay, so check it a couple times. Um, and that's it for lesson nine.